Yeah, so, <laughs> hello, uh, welcome to The Industry is Doom. Ah, I am Michaela Gorman. I'm Blake Hunsley. Uh, that scream is on behalf of reality, uh, as I feel like um, uh, what, what has been an interesting year and a half is quickly accelerating towards either uh, universal collapse, uh, dimensional overlap, or just plain old silliness. My normal anxiety, which is generally overtaking me at all points in this time stream, mm. whether it's the best of timelines or the current timeline, mm. has just evaporated in the wake of everyone else being at the same level. I'm just like, oh, hi. Oh, I'm totally fine now. I'm kind of actually curious to see if uh, maybe Terrence McKenna was just off in his math and this is how you reach a society singularity. You just have something so ah, blazingly mind-breakingly stupid that we all realize some kind of higher level understanding of reality to move on past it not necessarily a disturbance in the force so much as something forcefully disturbed yeah yeah like like a fundamental rule of uh, physics suddenly being changed and the reason is <clears throat> but now that's how you have to live life i'm very excited for section two of this show today <laughs> Because we are going to have a bit of a chat. Oh my god. With and about America. Ooh. I love America. <laughs> but I am not in love with America at the moment. <laughs> I Oh, I will not go to America at the oh, moment. God. Oh my god. I was saying that from the moment Jesus. Captain Orange, you know, took to his golden jet and crashed into the White House. Yeah, that, that Oh, like... shouldn't use that lingo, but our <laughs> listeners might have just gone up. <laughs> Hello. And welcome to Innocuous Buzzwords Are Fun. Hello, random airport uh, uh, <clears throat> training grounds in Florida. Oh, Lord. <laughs> <laughs> then you made a religious exclamation. <laughs> oh, what was it? Uh, I'm trying to remember what that guy used to do. Uh, one of the pilots when he was training in Florida. Uh, I can't remember. One, he, he got really obsessed with something. And it was either uh, strip clubs... He got really obsessed with strip clubs or going to the Blockbuster to rent video games. And it's like one or the other. And he spent any time he wasn't training to kill Americans secretly, he was at the strip club and or playing video games religiously. It was like he got to Florida, was exposed to Florida, and became a little Florida. I'm, I'm trying to think of which one I... Which one is more shameful? <laughs> Like, yeah, like, Which is do you great. become a complete fucking game nerd yeah. and you're just renting video games from Or is it dollar dollar like, bills, y'all? Oh, just yeah, you're like, just, just, just blowing that all terrorist money on those strippers. <laughs> oh, this is great. Oh. So there, there's, there might be, it, I've created one of two timelines. Maybe they're both fake, but they're out there now. And so out there is now is a timeline in which there is a stripper who got money that was part of 9-11 terrorist funding. No, no, and, no. And spent it on who the fuck knows. No, there's a much more dramatic timeline. I'm sure, I'm hoping that's option two. <laughs> yeah. Option one being that Blockbuster got it all. Oh, no. Okay, <laughs> option three. And blew it. Option three, there's like, you know, a semi-well-to-do <laughs> former stripper out there who made it semi-well-to-do on terrorist money <laughs> and is raising a surprise and possibly slightly Saudi-complected child. And one day, great. it's just going and to And because she's from click. Florida, she's like, he's half mine, he's half terrorist. Like, oh, oh that's great. Oh, God, That's yeah. great. Oh, it's too good. That comes from your father's side. Clean your room. It's <laughs> your father's side. <laughs> Don't ask about him. He hated vegetables, too, and then he crashed a plane. <laughs> he hated eat vegetables, and he hated America. Do you hate America? Eat your vegetables. Eat your, eat your peas. <laughs> uh, I think we may have made Florida sound more wholesome than it is. Uh, that's the weirdest. Like, I, uh, I, I love Florida because it is absolutely... It, it's Baudrillard's uh, <clears throat> Simulacra and Simulation... But if it didn't give a fuck and didn't care if you looked at it, but that's not it. Sound effects. Now you have to fill the next couple minutes while I get paper towels and refill your wine. Indeed I do. 
Yes, Carry that sound show. was, of course, a wine glass hitting the ground. Not shattering, thankfully. But alas, all of that precious, precious wine, a Pinot Grigio, I believe, has just hit the ground. I can tell because I think I made it. <laughs> My previous job was making wine. Where did we leave off? Have we gotten to Nova Scotia being counted as Florida yet? Uh, no, but that is an excellent segue. Well, it's true. How are we... Uh... I hate that it's true. Oh, wait, technically. Okay, so here's, here's a real question. Uh, uh, we used to be Canada's Alabama. Uh, is that a lateral forward or reductive move? Well, it's slowly getting less racist, so that's great. <laughs> that's literally some progress. But it's still making the news in pretty much every other way. Like, I, I kind of feel like, you know how there's Florida man. Mm. I, I, there's definitely, like... I don't know if there's a Nova Scotia man. There's definitely a South Shore man. Ooh. There's definitely a Cape Breton man. There's, de there's definitely a Cape Breton man. Yeah. Like, um... There's a New Brunswick man, for sure. Oh, yeah. <laughs> there's definitely is. There's not a PEI man. Nothing ever happens there. <laughs> uh, no, you're right. There, there is there is a PEI girl, but the, she's entirely fictional, which is the most curious thing about it. Someone it's... made her up and chose to make her a redhead. Yeah. Who would do that? I... I don't know. I'm only saying this because I'm hoping I'm being heard by my <laughs> fiery-haired spouse in the next room, but apparently not. There are no there are no angry gingers on the marge. Sometimes it uh, gets uh, you, you can slip a few by. I hope somehow hashtag angry gingers on the march becomes a thing. Angry gingers on the march. Let's get everyone on the march. Um, let's get everyone on the march. If I have to read one more editorial screaming that the Canadian Senate has to pass marijuana legislation or it will lose its legitimacy. I thought they did. Oh, no. No, it's been amended, and now it's back. And then they passed it, like, two days ago. Well, no, it yeah. hasn't passed yet. What? I'm sure of this. I swear to God, I'm just sure a couple of days ago it passed, and it's going back to the House for, like, ratification no, or some No, I'm shit. sure it's going back to the Senate because now it's over, um... Now it's over, uh, home-growing. That sound you hear is us furiously looking things up on our smartphones. <laughs> Which one of us is wrong? Bum, 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 Who is ill-informed? Will it be the one you suspect? <laughs> or will it be the other one? Who you kind of suspected? Well, it won't be legal on July 1st. I'm not even Googling right now. I'm uh, just looking at my phone. <laughs> I already looked this up before you came over. I'm sure of this. Uh, now that the Senate has said voted yes on cannabis, what happens next? Three days ago. One day ago, pot legalization battle brewing as government rejects key Senate change. What? The House was like, no, you have to let people be able to grow it at home. And I was like, hey, hey, thanks, the House. I mean, it's true. They, they do have to. Like, I appreciate the, that. The way that they've uh, uh, kind oh, of. Oh, wait a minute. Is... So it was either the one that they suspected or it was the one they kind of suspected all along, but you were wrong. Yes. <laughs> and but yeah, that's the thing. It's, it's home cultivation, which, come on. And everyone's going, well, you can you can make your own beer at home. You can make your own wine at home. You can yeah. blah, blah, blah. Anyone who doesn't see that as a straight comparison, I do not understand. They're like, well, you can pick the weed. It's like, well, you can pick the lock to your parents' liquor cabinet anytime you choose. Like, come on. Plus, if I recall, uh, uh, growing under a certain amount is still decriminalized anyway. So it's like you've already you, you've already treated it equally. Is it on the same? Yeah, oh, shit. like like you have uh, it's something like under now seven. I informed. It's something like under seven plants or something like that. Sorry, there was a cat in the studio. So this house have, is a zoo. Oh, I know. So you know, like people already could. In an amount that wouldn't net them any kind of, you know, large-scale profit. I just get really tired of, like, children being held up as, like, what about the children? It's like, uh, what about the children? Every child, every, okay, every one of us, when we were children, yeah. grew up in a world that was, to hear it talked about today, inherently ridiculously unsafe in some way or another. There were still lawn darts. Yeah, there okay, yeah, okay, darts. there you go. Yeah, I was just thinking I was dating myself, but no, that's true. Lawn darts, yeah. Lawn darts. Yeah, I remember lawn darts. Let's let's fucking hurl projectile, uh, uh, you know, like tiny little spikes at each other's heads. Awesome. Now we're like, 
now they're the culture apparently and i get uh, i get really mad at people who generalize about generations so i don't want to do that but at the same time like people get child services called on them for letting their kids play unattended in their yard yeah no it's like no okay like they can't no common sense there like why would there be that's frustrating. And admittedly, this is a media problem because uh, the numbers don't show an increase or some sort of large amount of <clears throat> uh, abductions. It's just that because of the interconnectivity of media, every instance of it becomes something that a lot of people are aware of. There's, there's entire mom networks that just force feed this stuff. And so... You don't get the perspective of, okay, in my region, there's been one abduction this year, and it was by the child's father. You get, every day, there mm-hmm. are children being abducted, and yours you is get, next. You get amber alerts in the little, what's that thing called, the Chiron? I get fucking amber alerts in my text messages. Oh my god. Those things will fire off if someone in Maine disappears. <laughs> Maine's mostly wilderness. It's pretty easy to disappear in Maine. It, it's, it's mostly wilderness and Stephen King. And hitting Stephen King with your truck. My favorite part of this whole thing, is I've done, it, is, it is not hitting Stephen King with a truck. Uh, I think it was a van. Oh, you're right. It was a van. Uh, it, it doesn't matter That's because crazy. Stephen King yeah. got the ultimate revenge because that guy died. And Stephen <laughs> King then wrote him into the Dark Tower as an evil spirit that is possessed to specifically run down Stephen King to stop Stephen King from writing The Dark Tower and thus concluding the story in which the evil power is destroyed. That's... Yeah! Okay, that is the best part. I take it all back. The other best part is where the media runs these stories about someone calling child services because their kids were playing on a tenant in their front yard. Yeah. As if this is the most ludicrous overreaction anyone has ever had, and they're shocked and appalled at the state to which society has fallen that we trust each other so little Yeah. that we feel the need to make these kind of phone calls. And it's just like, you're the ones that say, see something, say something all the time. You're the ones all about everything. You're the ones... Ah! And, and yeah, and they pretend like, oh, this has never happened before. And it's like, oh, excuse me. Listen but to us s- yell when we used to come up with the titles and fucking frame up the covers. Oh my god, yeah, no, like, like it, was, there. it was intentional. It. It's a product. It's sell a product. It. You sell that, you make that shit sexy. It's great. It's, I, I love it when you read, <laughs> when you essentially read pieces, you know, little thought pieces that are like, don't believe everything you read, and it's just like, the internet is a dangerous place, and it's like, everyone's got a hidden agenda, they're trying to make money, remember, everything is a product, and it's like, but I'm reading this in something that, at best, I paid for, yeah. and most regularly did not pay for, like, <sighs> it's, it's the, uh, the ad busters fallacy, um, ad busters is a great magazine, that is uh, uh, nothing but, ad, you know, like... Uh, it's a lifestyle magazine. It's a lifestyle adver- uh, magazine that is selling editorials based on anti-consumerism, and every issue costs $20. <laughs> uh, I When I was a young scrappy If you team, frame it in a slightly different light, it's yeah. totally different, man. It's totally different, man. <laughs> it's totally different. <laughs> When I was a young scrappy teen, uh, uh, aren't you? Aren't you now a young scrappy I, I, teen? No, this is this is back when I used the vandalized branded uh, uh, vending machines. You don't do that now. Ah, not anymore. No. Uh, anyway, uh, sell out. Uh, I I used to read it, and it, I I read it. I think, you know, because of its enormous cost, you didn't buy every fucking issue, and it only came out maybe once or like court, you know, four times a year. But I think I got six issues in, and they started selling their unbrand sh- uh, uh, the sneakers sneaker. with the black dot. Yeah, yeah, yep, yep. sexy sneakers. Yep. I wanted those sneakers. They're a hundred and seventy-five dollars. Yeah, but what better way to show off your like eco-friendly hipster cred? Yeah, yeah, and that's that was the exact thought that was just like, oh, I'm done with these. Toss in the garbage. This is all just another fucking brand. The unbrand is a brand. Mm-hmm. Burn it to the fucking ground. Mm-hmm. <laughs> this is great. Someone somewhere figured out that everything is now a brand. So they're like, let's come up with your personal brand. Personal and that is brand. Post- that is great. And it's as great you. as it is blasphemous. You. It's yeah. fantastic. 
Oh, you know, if you're gonna commodify, if you're gonna commodify, commodify, yeah, commodify everything in your society, then you have to brand yourself. Do it, says the one without social media. <laughs> Meanwhile, the general fear of publicity. Over here, I think I have twelve accounts. Oh God! Uh, every every one of these shows has an account. The production company has an account. Um, a unrelated, well, a somewhat related magazine that I sometimes write has an account. Sometimes being one so far in a bunch of articles that I could slap together for another. Mm-hmm. Um, a, a, a place on eBay where I just sell used books has a brand. See? Ill Literature. Look it up. I know it's a sweet name. I think I have looked it up because I know that name and it is a sweet name. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, brand everything or else you're not going to get any fucking attention. Soon, I will be having a yard sale. It will not be publicized in any way. It will be so, so bizarrely trendy somehow that you'll just have to stumble across it, and I might make a wooden nickel. Actually, that might be a really, really brilliant experiment, (laughs) is if you tell me when it is, and I will intentionally brand the fuck out of it on social media. Don't give the location at all. Just be like, yeah, Blake's Mystery Yard Sale. Mystery Yard Sale. Yeah. Blake's Mystery Yard Sale. Come on, it's a Blake's There's nothing Mystery. here for you. There's like, nothing here for you. Yeah. Don't come. Go on down to Blake's Mystery Yard Sale. Blake, no don't. I will not make change for you. You're not invited. I will not make change. Do you have any bags? Fuck you. If you only have a 20, then yes, that is five cents. Can you have it for a nickel? Fuck you. Can you have it for five dollars? If you can buy my fucking yard sale, you can have it for free. (laughs) Just you, though. Just you. If more than one person comes claiming they heard this, I'm going to punch everyone after the first. (laughs) First one gets me free. Everyone else can fucking get a punch in the face. (laughs) I feel like we've covered Canada. Ugh. Might as well have, because the next sec- uh, section is very Canada heavy as well. so riled up. We have to move on. I'm sorry. Just, we we uh, really do. <laughs> so, there's a special place in hell for people who don't move on to segment two. Apparently, there's also a special uh, heart attack waiting for that man. Did you hear that? Within 24 hours of making the statement, there's a special place in hell for people who disagree with Donald Trump on trade or whatever... Uh, he had a fucking heart attack. As someone on Twitter said, you swing for the Canadian Prime Minister, you best not miss. It's two interesting things have happened. One, which I I think we always suspected, was that if America came for us in any way, that every Canadian would suddenly raise one eyebrow and be like, did you though? Yeah. Yeah. And that's collectively happened like I've never experienced. I'm so happy that that whole undercurrent of like, yeah, we're really nice people, but, you know, we'll fuck you up. We don't come come together that often on anything, let alone America or foreign relations in any way or politics because we're all so different, man. And so regional. and, And yet, and yet, that pile of absolute shit Doug Ford... (laughs) <laughs> is towing that's uh, that's lines. that's premier pile of dog shit dog board. I'm, 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 I've yet you're, to dec- you're actually visibly <sighs> see things. I've yet to de- decide what name I'm going to give him. Um, uh, it may be uh, 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 underboss Doug Ford. Um, it, it's certainly not going to be premier. There's there's something fucking gangland about that man. Can I describe my feelings on this? Because Don Ford, I, oh, I have I, I have family that I love that lives in Ontario, so I don't want to slag the province off too badly. But at the same time, Ontario is so fucking frustrating that they oh, deserve this so shit. And like enough of them, enough of them voted for it. Under the system we've all had for a ridiculously long amount of time. If you want to change it, go march in the streets and fucking change it. Because otherwise, it's just gonna sit there and be first past the post. It's working enough that people aren't riled up enough to march in the streets. They voted for a government that didn't change it. People didn't march in the streets. Yeah. We had first past the post, 
at pretty much every level. I think it's the nature of any political power that is over 20% of the population. Mm -hmm. Under 20%, you're always fighting. NDP are under 20%. Under 20% is always just kind of wackadoo in some way or another. Yeah. And I'm not saying the NDP is wackadoo in some way or another. There's also definitely wackadoo. I'm not, not saying that. Yeah, but, I'm not, not saying that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I technically agree with pretty much everything the NDP have to say. Oh, absolutely. But they are humans. Yeah, and they that's are flawed. Yes. <laughs> They are flawed. We are all flawed, but 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 but, but as their party generally goes, there have been serious exceptions. I yeah. was thinking when I was thinking about man, you're right. We, there is a ton of Canada in this segment. No, there is a ton. There of always Canada. is. But I was thinking when I was like, how how pissed we are at you know America dis first time ever hashtag <laughs> hashtag travesty uh, hashtag, hashtag special place in hell for that shit hashtag we're quite a bit more pissed off than that time in Afghanistan when they killed four of our soldiers. Yeah. Which is curious. If you, like, consider the balance of what that actually because is. Because this is their elected figurehead and policymaker, which, yeah. if we can just take a hot beat on that, oh my don't God. make your figurehead, your top figurehead, Ooh. your top policymaker. Holy yeah. shit. Don't invest so much fucking power, America. Listen, we should not have a pointless governor general. Having a monarchy is stupid. I've made my point on that pretty clear. Yeah. But we need to have a figurehead that is separate. Like, okay, so many countries. Let's take Germany. Angela Merkel, who I who is just, I, I people will be like, yeah, you shouldn't love her. Hey, fag, you should not love her. It took her forever on things and other stuff. And I'm like, I don't care. I kind of love her. She's great. Tracy Ullman is a great friend. It's it's Fine. one of those things of yes, it took her and Hillary forever to get there. But once they get there, you cannot budge them. But this is the thing. They also have a president. Whose name I don't even fucking know right now. Yeah. But they have a figurehead. Like, that's fine. If you want to have a colorful, bombastic wackadoo at the head, make him the president. Don't make him the prime minister or the chancellor or whatever the fuck has actual executive power. Like, yeah. Madness. Yeah. That's why, yeah, you know, stick to our general system of uh, hero generals, <laughs> astronauts, scientists, artists. If the... <sighs> If the leader of your nation doesn't have to appear before the body of elected officials of your nation, mm. like, on a regular, say, weekly basis, at least, like, that's fucked. If, no, yeah, yeah, and, and... Sit there and justify yourself. What are you doing? Ab absolutely, because, yeah, it's it's one of those things of your figurehead... Your, your figurehead doesn't... I don't have to even, answer questions. It doesn't have to acknowledge any of these fucking people. The Democrats are all made of mincemeat, and they're horrifying. <laughs> You know, like if if the one of them coughed one time, I'm not getting near that. <laughs> I'm not naming names, but it was that one right there. Every Democrat is a prostitute, and I would never associate with prostitutes like the Democrats. Oh, oh, so so yes, uh, a, a part of this vast travesty of uh, the G7 was that he was intentionally, and they admitted this for some fucking reason. He intentionally was just showing off so that when he met Kim, he could seem more powerful. See, I heard, I heard. I think CNN and everyone was like, no, it's a front, man, in case the Singapore summit fails. And they're like, blame Canada. I think one of their spokesmorons was actually like, if this goes south, like, blame Canada, because Trudeau tried to make Trump look weak before the summit. It's like, okay, there's your, there's your blame a Meanwhile, that summit was a great piece of political theater that will play well almost everywhere oh while doing God. absolutely nothing except legitimizing Kim at home. Like, that's the thing. That's it, great. It, Life will get better for North Koreans, and that's great, except that their dictatorship won't crumble and go away and they'll it's, probably still have nuclear weapons eventually but meanwhile they'll just still be under an oh autocratic no. ruler and it's even worse no freedom of any kind it's worse than that um it's precedent <sighs> setting so first of all you had the the united states president meeting with a communist dictator not in some closed door negotiation but some one-on-one -on -one big pom -pom 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 moment nonsense and then yeah the, the pom 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 that was equal not 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 trying to one up like he wasn't trying to one up on some intellectual level of like playing down to seem you know we're not we're not interested interested in this for ourselves we're interested in this for policy 40 percent of americans at least ego. approve of this nonsense oh god yes which is horrifying but but my most furious contempt yeah is for those lifelong republicans out there those lifelong sane moral reasonable 
generally professional or well-educated Republicans who have voted for occasional bizarro candidates before to one extent or another, but who endorsed this shit with their vote, yeah. and now they're like, I'm so horrified by this. Yes, I'm still a Republican. Why? Why? How many, how many, how many piles of shit presidents from your party is it going to take before you're declared illegitimate? Honestly. You're now at, what, I would say generously, too. Yeah. And, and generously. Yeah, generously and honestly, oh, well, history's uh, uh, making sure that Reagan is revealed to be an utter monster. So let's go, let's go three. Yeah. Um, George Bush the first was more of a... Um, a classic CIA kind of guy. He he wasn't so much horrible as he was a spy, and therefore, why are you asking me questions? Mm -hmm. You know, so it's like, that's not helpful. No, he was America's Stephen Harper then. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's like, you're not... Not an utter monster, not helpful. but a robot. Yeah, exactly. Um, but, uh, 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 frankly, I think they should all get hit with RICO charges, the entire Republican Party. Because they, they, there are enough people involved in that party in illegal activities intentionally and planned with conspiracy that RICO charge. RICO charges. Just rain RICO charges. I, I want to I see It's a better option than just shutting the party movie. down because the thing is, if they shut down, it's just going to be back to branding. It's just going to be a rebranded effort. Oh, You're yeah. going to have a new party that's just like, oh, reasonable, sane conservatives. Like, well, uh, the we're Canada-style conservatives. We respect Canada again. Fuck you, American leadership, so hard. Fuck you, everyone in the Senate who hasn't had anything to say about this. We have been sitting up here being pretty reasonable, if super moralizing and annoying. Oh, really, really? Well, we're, for we've how been very fucking Canadian long, about it. For we? how fucking long? We haven't oh, had your back us. once. We didn't mm -hmm. go into Iraq with you, and that was like, and we still helped out there in various ways. Yeah, like we, we still. Uh, it, you you could um, you could volunteer. If you weren't in active service or were a part of a special service or were in the RCMP, I believe, to take part in uh, joint uh, uh, teams in Iraq. Um, Canadians, of course, have never been barred from serving uh, uh, within the United States Armed Forces. Um, so that's also a thing that you can do without losing your citizenship. I, be I believe without losing We have your so many joint agreements. We have so many military I I've come to the conclusion that no one has told Trump about NORAD because he would either shut it down because it doesn't make a profit, which apparently is what he thinks... Uh, we don't need to share America's assets. Yeah, we don't need to trade. We don't need to... Oh, yeah. We don't need Canada's help. Canada's going, small. Going back for one second, the, the precedent that sets in South uh, uh, Korea is that they he has agreed to end all war games... <laughs> without in, telling the South. Without telling the South and without talking to fucking Japan. Finally, Japan and South Korea will have something to agree on being enraged about. <laughs> Donald Trump did it. Give him a Nobel Prize. Uh, he he has peace between North and South Korea peace, and South Korea. He brought peace between and South Japan. Korea and Japan. Oh, there will be no peace between North Korea and anyone. <laughs> That's virtually guaranteed now. But there will be peace at long last, spiritually, between South Korea, at least, and Japan. Finally, the Japanese are back to the way they should be, hating the Americans. Oh, our greatest moral enemy, Trump. Trumpism, Republicans, eventually Americans, oh, Migooks, they're terrible. They're going to fucking invade us. Uh, uh, anyway, we're, uh, that was Migooks, not the racial slur. It's the Korean word for Americans, in case anyone suddenly found themselves on the verge of being offended when they were realistically being on the verge of being undereducated. You're welcome. Yeah. Congratulations. This has been a learning moment, America. <laughs> Seriously, I get really fucking mad. Oh, no, it's very insulting. It's, it's, it's so... So goddamn stupid because we've adopted their culture in every okay, yeah. okay, okay. We're, we're we're symbiotic in this ridiculous pilot whale to a, a fucking shark or whatever the hell you know those little goddamn. Can I dork are. out in in terms of explaining this for a quick moment? Why not? Okay, so I saw this meme that was Trump going off on Canada, and it was on a civilization forum. Mm. on uh, 
Reddit. Mm -hmm. And it was, uh, they have denounced you, and then in brackets it says, but they, this does not mean they have declared war, but they have not declared war about America and Canada. And I was like, that's great, because my best analogy for the way I feel about America and Canada is there's an option you can play in a later civilization game, I'm really dorking out here, where you can have a cultural victory. Yeah. So if you export enough culture and cultural product and cultural force on your neighbors, eventually you can overwhelm them. And they send an emissary to you that says, like, if you're playing as America, like, we're all listening to rock and roll and buying blue jeans. You've taken over our culture. Like, I despair for the future of our nation. And I'm like, yeah, that's Canada sometimes. Like, that's how I feel about Canada when I'm watching every American product ever made on television and movie screens and listening to it on the radio and reading American books and like, reading American magazines and newspaper articles and watching CNN all the time. Every and Rachel Maddow and occasionally getting mad at Mia Brzezinski <laughs> all the time. Every single member of... Well, not every, but It's like, exhausting and they fucking reward us by electing someone who does this. Yeah. What no, a kick in the teeth. No, practically every member of our generation can quote at least nine seasons of The Simpsons. You, you don't need there to invade. There is nothing about Buffy the Vampire Slayer I cannot tell you. There you go. You don't need to invade. There is a Sunnydale street in our town and a Sunnydale construction in our town, and I fucking love both of them to death. <laughs> They're great. And that's just another American product that I'm just like, ooh, okay. Our biggest national magazine, I would say, McLean's, the mm. national magazine of record, maybe. Why not? Like, let's, let's, I guess let's go there. I guess we have to. Well, if, if you're going to award titles that are meaningless. Well, Chatelaine's been, titles. like, uh, hollowed out as of today, so. What? Oh, yeah. Uh, 75 staffers. Uh, today? Fired off from a bunch of shit, including Chatelaine today. Wow. Yeah. yeah no, that sucks. Like, Rogers Communications went... Fuck that. Oh, Rogers Communications. Rogers. Wait a minute. That implies I endorse any communications company. Yeah, because Bell is pretty... Mm. Fuck. 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 <laughs> fuck Bell. Fuck, fuck Bell, Bell so hard. Fuck Bell. Fuck Bell. This, this show is sponsored by Fuck Bell. And that includes It's you, a Dan. non-profit organization that has existed from pretty much right this second. Yeah. That does not take donations or endorsement of any kind, but yeah. it does take the hashtag Fuck Bell. Oh, you know what we can take because it's uh, uh, legally out there and free and uh, uh, we can use it under a bunch of uh, rights claims. Uh, the image of Alexander Graham Bell. And we can have Alexander Graham Bell right there saying, fuck Bell. That's great. Yeah. Do they own the copyright to Let's Talk? Uh, yes. <sighs> yeah. That whole... Mm. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's for... You know what? No. Nope. <clears throat> not in the America segment. That's that, too... That, that's... Yeah. Because we've, we've dealt yeah. with it, we can we can talk about it yeah. later. Yeah. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, that's oof. the thing. When we talk... Okay, this gets back to this. Yeah. Yes, this is reinforcing this. When we get Canadian in the America segment, I like to think of American listeners being like, but Jesus are they talking about? Yeah. Although probably not saying it that way because they're not the, maritimers. The, the, the Jesus, yes. But when it's America stuff in the America segment, <laughs> I expect all Canadian listeners to be like... Yeah. Yeah, I, yeah, that's, yeah. I understand the context yeah, of, of that. Yeah, of course. Okay, like, yeah. I get that, yeah. Yeah. Like, for God's sakes, though. ask us anything about Maine, and we'll tell you mostly things that are either true, or about Stephen King, or about Cabot Cove. And, you know, that's But we'll know what's really ridiculous all about, about all of them. Like, ask someone from, what, let's say, what's, let's say Vermont... About no, no, Nova no. Scotia. And yeah, I, yeah. Uh, Ask Vermont about Nova Scotia. Yeah, that's I what I'm saying. Like, say that like distance Quebec. Quebec. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. Yeah. Quebec is a mysterious cultural powerhouse that you can ask any Anglo about and they are bewildered and then you watch any moment of it or delve into it and you're just like, this is both fantastic uh, and slightly inaccessible. That reminds me, I want to find and write an article interviewing at some point the French Americans who live just over the uh, border of Vermont, who consider themselves Quebecois Americans. Oh, fun. Yeah. Oh, fun. Yeah, it's just like... That's great. Oh, you're If any of them of voted awesome. Republican in any election in their entire lives, they, they should... You know what? They shouldn't anything. I'm not going to go that broad, but, like, I'm still kind of mad. Like, <laughs> ah! I don't... I know. There are a few things that, as a Maritimer, I feel I that are super broadly connected with other regions of the country. Like, we are oddly regional. Yeah. Like, Americans true. are very clearly more America first. Like, whether you're America first or whether you're just like, no, I'm an American. Yeah. It's like, like, you ask you people from here, from like, things. oh, where are you from? Like, oh, I'm a Nova Scotian. I'm in, you know, 
oh, I'm in Quebecois. Oh, I'm in Manitoban. No one ever said they're Saskatchewanian or whatever. They're just like, I'm from Saskatchewan. Yeah. I'm from the prairies. The pra- yeah, yeah. It always, you know, well, it just make it Didn't you know better. Saskatchewan is king of the prairies? Ba 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 ba. Flat. Why isn't. Nice. <laughs> Their license plates should either say king of the prairies or ba 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 ba. Flat. Flat. <laughs> that should be the only two options. It should just be the, uh, the grandfather, the old guy from uh, uh, Corner Gas looking confused. And then, like, on either side is your license plate number. Have you encountered... I hate to shift conversation again, but I'm still just... (sighs) Have you encountered Americans online apologizing en masse to Canadians en masse lately in, in large volumes? I have. It's the most galling thing. I'm just like, we get it. You voted for the other one of your two parties. Well, that that's definitely a thing that... that I get uh, that it's judgy, but at the same time, I'm just like, mm, like <laughs> n- go, okay, so write your senator, and if they're not screaming at the top of their lungs, write them about that. Why aren't... Mm. I don't expect them to scream at the top of their lungs over us, but the apologies are a bit much, especially because I expect most of them were not, in addition to a letter to all of their representatives. Yeah, and I, I, I do wonder... How much? And why uh, do you have yeah, two you... parties? Why is it well, also yeah, wh- entrenched? Why? why do you allow unlimited, unlimited campaign donations through super PACs? It's just like, hi, we'd like our corruption to be slightly hidden behind a giant curtain. Thanks. I don't think America is capable of doing uh, more than two parties anymore. Um, it may not be capable of that, but it's capable of getting rid of fucking super packs and crazy huge donations like just mm, i don't even know that limit anymore. goddamn no no i think they could do that be- because america i think they could do that in public health care that's all i fucking want public health care absolutely and stop being a dick to our prime minister <laughs> at the very least unless our economy suddenly tanks which knock on wood i kind of fear yeah but like if we make it through this economically, Justin Trudeau can just laugh his way through the next election oh, right now. Oh, yeah, God. He, he, even if they pull out the big guns, and by big guns, I mean Peter McKay, the triumphant return of the, oh, the, the anointed one. Oh, God. I, oh, and we that's, slagged I, off. Hold I, on, I swear though. to God, it's, ha- it's coming. We slagged it's off coming. Doug Ford pretty hard, as well we should, mm-hmm. for various reasons. But, okay, I think it says something positive about our country that in this moment... Even that guy, yeah, yeah, e- even came out and publicly oh. supported the liberal prime minister. So while well, well, Andrew, were there sh- any dissenting voices on the national uh, scene? Maxime Bernier, uh, Br- <laughs> Maxime Bernier, Bernier, he dissented, but that was more of a fight between him and Sheer over uh, the book that he was trying to get published. That Sheer told him that that was Bernier, Bernier. That's it. Yeah, thank you. No problem. Uh, Is it Maxime? Maxime. Really? Maxime. I always forget that. Uh, and uh, uh, he, he slept with a, uh, 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 the, the girl of a Hell's Angels and gave her some secret federal documents that he that's, shouldn't have. Oh, that's him. Yeah. He's the, like, I'm suddenly a libertarian, right? He's, he's a complete fucking dipshit. Um, anyway, he wanted to include a bunch of attacks on Trudeau in his book, and uh, Shearer told him no. And so now he's been kicked uh, out of the uh, of cabinet, and he's now a backbencher. Yeah, I heard that. I love that everyone was like, it was about his opposition to supply management, which is, if this, this is the America segment, if you don't know what supply management is, like, you don't need to, but if you look it up, it might give you one reason to look at Canada's economy and be like, why do you get to have that, though? In reaction, it's because of your agriculture subsidies. Yeah. That's why. We're next to the it's largest just our economy of on Earth. Yes. We have to deal with things. Yes, exactly. We do have some protectionist things, but we still also do not have a trade surplus with you. You have one with us. My God, you have one with Earth. Yeah. You already won a culture victory, America. Like, and a nuclear victory. You don't need an economic victory on top of it. And you've already got one, so calm down. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> we're going to vote Donald Trump because he's going to hold China to task economically. That Instead, he's going to take on most states' yeah, largest most trading states. partners. He's, he's going to get a handshake agreement on nuclear uh, disarmament from North Korea, which has already turned out to be bullshit, and yet he's going to pull out all of their troops uh, from war games. 
uh, he saluted a North Korean soldier. He did. Saluted him. He did. Which is you you as as first of all as head of the the uh, the, the as, as commander in chief of the United States forces, you do not salute any other uh, uh, soldier. He's Donald Trump. He does whatever the fuck he wants. Country. That's what his supporters are gonna say. And you know what? They're right in that one respect. He is Donald Trump. He's yeah. gonna do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Totally. That's not an endorsement. Yeah, exactly. Whereas Trump saluting that person is an endorsement of their authority. That person could then take play, t- take a, 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 a part in an atrocity. And technically, that's an endorsement of an atrocity under the authority of that fucking office. Everyone out there is like, it's okay, America's going to answer for it in the midterms. And it's like, will, no, on the one won't. hand, will they fuckers? Probably not. No. No, probably not. They'll probably, ooh, they'll probably endorse this shit. It's probably going to be awful. Oh, good. They'll do what they do every, every time for the last uh, four cycles. And it's, uh, no, four, no, uh, eight, eight cycles, I want to say. Uh, and it's uh, a president gets elected. And they hold the House and Congress. Come mid, uh, House and Congress fall, uh, but and the President and uh, Congress House become stalemate. President uh, gets reelected. Oh, you half. think? Okay, so you think the Democrats are going to take the midterms? Uh, yeah, they'll take the midterms. Do you but, think they're going to take both but sides, have both houses? No, yeah, but they'll have no power. It doesn't matter. They'll impeach him. They they will not have the backbone. No, they totally will. They'll have they the public will in the background. Cowards. No, there's going to be more charges between now this and is, then. No, no, this no, is, no, this and is that's all the going thing. to come This is through, what I find the most uh, galling, though. It's like enforcement and stuff. I don't I even care about the midterms, because you know what the midterms aren't? Right fucking now. Yeah. There's all kinds of damage being inflicted all over the place, and now on my country, thanks. Yeah. That, that, that's, this has, that this has oh, not I'm been so dealt terrible. with. Oh, I'm so terrible. Now it's happening in my country, but I don't oh, get a yeah. vote, because I live here. I didn't vote for the leopards eating faces party. Yeah, no, that that this wasn't dealt with within one to three months of the election, and I mean dealt with in which marshals storm the White House and drag that fucker out. Mueller's investigation is illegitimate, only in the sense that it has taken way too fucking long. Get on with it and mm. get this madman. Out. No, I'm not even going to say madman. Get this fucking con man out of the White House. I love yeah. that all of a sudden now that okay. Canada's volume of trade with New York State must be enormous. Mm-hmm. And now all of a sudden that there's tariffs happening between, like, that will especially hit the, that kind of bordering region of Ontario so hard. Now that that's happening, suddenly New York is launching charges, or launching a suit against Trump. To be fair, the that's state great. of New York has always hated Donald Trump for that's various fair, reasons. fair, and they've been preparing for different things, but they sure did launch it right after that. They, they sure did. Well, here, here's the thing. Uh, I love New York. There, we're gonna do a special episode well, someday. For a reason. Oh, I know. But someday of the other ep- uh, of the other show, we're gonna do a very special episode about New York because I love New York. What's the other show again? Uh, the, 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 won't you please shut up? Anyway, I didn't ask because I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so uh, uh, and in New York, New York is lovable because they have that very special attitude, in which. It's not enough if someone is your enemy to stab them. You gotta stab them at the exact moment when it'll hurt the most, and then you gotta twist that knife. Oh, that's a great enemy for Donald Trump to have. Yeah, and and that's New York, and and he's a New Yorker, so it's it's a matter of honor. It's a matter of betrayal. You. It have makes sense. Fucking betrayed New York. Yeah. Stab. Yeah. Twist. Yeah. Pull. That's great. It makes sense. Giuliani's got to come in too, then somehow. Oh, he's gonna get it. Well, he's all already the got buzzwords his... in this episode. Good God, our audience people is gonna be huge. People hate him in New York. New Yorkers have hated Rudy Giuliani for years, and they hated him before nine eleven. They hate him very shortly after nine eleven. Rudy Giuliani doesn't go to New York much, and he doesn't walk on the streets much, <laughs> or else he will catch so much garbage. Mm-hmm. Rudy Giuliani is only safe in Times Square because it's mostly tourists, and they think it's a Rudy Giuliani local. <laughs> That'd be great. No, I'm just a Rudy Giuliani impersonator. It's the most dangerous job in New York City. 
don't know if I have anything else to say to America. I feel like I've expressed my... Fucking educate yourself. Oh, man. <laughs> you know when people are like, I'm not mad, I'm disappointed. Fuck you. I'm pissed as shit. Get your shit together. I'm unbelievably mad, and I get, I'm self-aware enough to get that it's like, now it's affecting me. <sighs> yeah, well, now it is affecting me, and it's already affected half of the planet, so fuck off. Get it done. Impeach him, for God's sakes. Dumb. There's... Ugh. Every defense I've ever heard of this man is ridiculous. Yep. I don't think... And that's the problem, is everyone's just like, well, wait until they present all the evidence. It's like, I get that, and I am. But for God's <laughs> sakes, there's been enough evidence already presented <laughs> that I'm like, every defense they have has been clearly a lie. Can you point to one that isn't? Not really? Yeah. No? Okay. There comes a point... I hope people write, hey, fag, and hey, tranny, yeah. with tons of evidence... Or tons of even just reasoning behind what's been presented complain. so far. Just being like, this is why Trump makes sense what he's doing, and this is why he hasn't committed any crimes, and this is how he didn't collude with Russia, and this is how he doesn't, just on other levels, praise fucking dictators yeah. and legitimize fucking dictators yeah. and demonize his fucking allies and yeah. destabilize Western alliances. Yeah. Fuck off. Enough people get that the grand scheme of things is getting disrupted that you... Could, I, now I realize I'm I'm bordering on like insurrection here, and there are legal means it's not to take care of this. And that's what I'm endorsing. We're not Americans. It's exactly it's a sincere criticism, but oh, now I'm gonna get mad at myself because that's all Canada does. <laughs> that's our greatest cultural export to America. We critique the fuck out of you. No wonder yeah. you want to trade war with us. You want to prevent that shit from getting in. I'm not gonna apologize because I'm not that kind of Canadian. That's what's on my license plate. Not that's an interesting idea, though. We're almost like America's subconscious, where, you know, like, it, it, it's kind of the same ideas, but processed just a little bit in a different way that comes back and be like, but do you? Just slightly to the left. Are you sure you want to? <laughs> yeah, we're, we're that voice in, in America's head. Yeah. And it just goes, really? And if any of our American listeners are listening to that and just being like, doesn't that make you not any kind of real thing on your own? Yeah. We're Canadians. We're not real. We are yeah. we are an idea beyond an idea beyond something else. We, our laws only exist after you've done the thing. If you do the thing and are the first person, congrats. You didn't do anything illegal. You get to do the thing. No one after you can do the thing. Yeah, unless you take it to the Supreme Court and say, listen... This thing wasn't illegal beforehand, and everything didn't go to hell. And then they go, you're right. Everyone can do the thing. The first person to discover and use magic is going to have a field day with that. It's going to be great. I can do whatever I want. That's right, America. Canada is about to be filled with magicians, and we're all really pissed right now. Yeah, but technically, anything in Canada is legal until you do it. And, and even then... Uh, after, like, uh, uh, dueling is going to be legal again, uh, I believe on July 1st. Why? Dueling. I, I, because they're Are you getting... telling me we managed to legalize dueling before we did. smoking weed? Yes. It, it's, technically, it's a repeal of an old law that, uh, they're, they're going through the books and trying to condense, uh, the criminal code because it does actually cost more money to print more and to have more, uh, available online condense it so they're taking cheaper. redundant shit but, yeah exactly see i approve of that this is why i disapprove of the term lawmaker because i'm like stop making new laws just spend your time getting rid of old ones there should be a repeal party where they just go through the books and repeal shit and that's what they're doing they're repealing things but it means that technically you can now duel a person to death and it's legal of course, it they'll still charge you with like manslaughter or something now, with an updated penal code. But technically, you're not murdering that person. I really am enjoying the mental image of someone mishearing what you said as dueling a person. Dueling. To death. It'd be like what they'd fucking deliver your baby to death. They don't even. They just stand by and encourage and Murderer. comfort you. You're doing a great job, Shannon. Let me put this pillow over your face for your own comfort. <laughs> you hold my hand. No, I can't. I can't touch you, Shannon. You disgust me. I feel like America was Shannon in this kind of teleplay. That's it. Okay, good night, Shannon. Segment two? Shannon Doherty, maybe. Oh. 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 Segment.
segment three. <laughs> Indeed, fucking segment three. Anyway, so opinions suck. That's my opinion. I love giving opinions, but I disparage opinion columns constantly. Yeah, and it, they've gotten really, really bad recently because uh, they've hit on the uh, the magical fact that uh, online, when it comes to hits and hits equals profit because of the amount of turnover you can get in advertisement, um, you no longer need interesting or valued opinions. You just need something that will get people to click on it almost in rage or in agreement. <clears throat> And thus you end up with like some truly horrible people like Andrew Coyne and uh, Jonathan Kay uh, writing, and, and Barbara Kay writing utter garbage simply because it will l- result in rage clicks. But what is the response to that, though? Like, this is the problem I have all the time. It's like, what do we do about that? Because on the one hand, I'm always just like, it has to be free speech all the time. You have to be able to write anything you want, blah, 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 blah. Yeah. This, that, of course, free speech all the time. And yet, at the same time, clickbait ends up working. People end up getting less informed. You get terrible, actual, as much as I hate to use the term ever, fake news. Like Yeah, you end and up then you with just... Trump. But at the same time, you know what? I still... There just has to be... I don't know how you do this. I don't think it's the responsibility of media. I think it's the responsibility of education. <clears throat> Uh, yeah, no, I'll uh, I'll agree with that. Uh, there definitely has to come come a point where uh, the reader has some personal responsibility <clears throat> to be aware uh, enough about what they're reading. Like, um, <clears throat> for context, um, in in uh, uh, not even the ancient world, say uh, uh, about a hundred years ago, um, it was expected that you would understand the classics. If you didn't understand the classics, you're a fucking idiot. Get out of the room. You don't belong here. I'm being serious. Leave. And like it was that much of a, a you know, you you uh, the, the classics, thousands of year old <clears throat> stories uh, from uh, Greek and <clears throat> the Middle Eastern uh, tradition uh, and uh, Roman tradition uh, uh, were expected to be known. So that if someone made a reference about it. You would know that and get that reference. If if someone did something in the spirit of something, you would you would be expected to know that. There was an expectation that if you were taking part in this conversation, you need to know this much. And there is no expectation anymore. You can have an opinion on CERN, and it's like, oh, tell me, where did you get your uh, doctorate in particle physics? I failed math in grade five. It's like, then shut the fuck up. This is the thing, is ultimately it doesn't matter because everyone has to have an equal vote, which is just a thing because it's the thing that has to be. And mm. that's exactly the way I want it. Yeah, that has to be. That has that. The has way to that be. that mentality can unfortunately translate in some ways is that everyone's opinion is valid no matter what their opinion is. And it's yeah. like, but sometimes that's not true. Sometimes opinions are unfounded and not backed up by actual facts. And often nowadays, based on lies. It's weird to combat that in any way, but you, yeah, you really can't censor any opinion ever. You just can't unless it's calling for immediate violence. Like I'm sorry. Yeah, and and uh, it has to be an educator kind of problem. Like it, it's also the way that teachers have got to take it upon themselves. Yeah, to instruct kids how to think critically. It, it's one and of those... parents have to reinforce that shit, but that mean anyone can pop out a kid, so what are you going to do there? No, It has to yeah. be educators. They're the only safety net that we have. And it, it, the only real hope is uh, through educators, because ultimately it, it's not something that they can themselves 100% educate to every person. Um, it's something that you kind of have to uh, awaken to and become aware of yourself. Um, educators will up the percentage of people who will reach that, Mm-hmm. But there, you know, it, it, it's one of those issues of uh, you, you, you've almost got to find that sweet spot where you get the vast majority of people awakening to that concept and potential instead of maybe 60%. Are you kidding? The best we can hope for in this society is like 65% of people. Yeah, I know. All like kind of getting that they have to read between the lines sometimes on some of the things because, you know. On the one hand, everyone understands, like we talked about earlier, everybody wants to sell them something. Yeah. 
but at the same time they don't translate that in critiques into you know of course the newspaper wants to sell you something that something is often an opinion is often you know an opinion backed up by sponsors and you know yeah. political allegiances like <sighs> they're also trying to sell you their uh, and authority time, most people just don't care about that yeah no it's true which is weird maybe it's the apathy that makes me the most angry right now because as we talked about in the america segment we're angry yeah. um but at home we're angry too because a lot of people have been oh we're this is supposed to be the like actual political experience and journalism experience and like personal the, but it's whatever hey, format frust- frustrations fuck format Frustration Fuck you, format. <laughs> Fuck you forever. Frustration is... Yeah, there was a lot of frustration, so let's go with that. Yeah, yeah. Let's, yeah, let's do that. Un- but apathy, you, there's been so many people that... Okay, we talked about opinion columns. My yeah. favorite part of writing for the magazine was writing opinion columns. And I know it's not respectable, and it's not whatever, and it's blah, blah, blah. My favorite part was writing opinion columns. It was great. I'm, I'm not saying that there, there, uh, uh, there's not a place for them. I, I'm not certainly not saying that I didn't have fun with them. Uh, I'm saying that currently they are used evilly, whereas we didn't use, you and I didn't use them evilly. Uh, not, uh, not knowingly at the time. Okay. I can't think of any examples, but yeah, I'm sure I can't I'm think wrong. Of any exa- like, you know, I, everybody's wrong sometimes. I certainly tried, especially with the opinion stuff, to, to always be on the more interesting oh, side. Yeah. No, the opinion, like, the the opinion... Basically, okay, the... Yeah, the blogs we did. The opinion yeah. blogs, essentially, like that uh, form. Uh, gr- granted, I will always recant uh, my claim that we don't need hover cars. That was purely based on a hypothetical argument based on insurance claims. Okay, anything I ever wrote, there's a lot of stuff I regret, but I never fucking slagged hover cars. <laughs> You know it would kill so many people and destroy so much property. Think on my tombstone, I wanted to say early proponent of hover cars. <laughs> Think every highway accident, but to buildings. You're derailing this. I loved the opinion columns. I loved the political opinion columns, and I love reading them now. And I, but I just. Even the ones I strongly disagree with, I get sometimes that the author is just trying to take the devil's advocate perspective, which I do not respect in and of itself at all, and I don't think is often necessary. Do that at any point. Sometimes I felt I had the minority opinion, and that made me write even louder. I think, Mm. but at those times I believed the minority opinion. I wasn't ever. I like to think I was never just devil's advocating. No, I, I think um, I, I think for the most part it, it, it was it was a place that was very empowering to write the minority opinion. Not only if the majority outside the magazine is opposed to it, but if the majority inside the magazine <clears throat> is opposed to it. Oh, those are the most fun. Like I disagree you, with you strenuously. Keep writing. Like that was a rare but fun occurrence. Yeah, and, and and like being able to disagree with the magazine and agree with the the vast majority of people. Mm-hmm. It's, I occasionally it's, get asked oh. for gay perspective, which was great. I occasionally get asked for uh, cyclist perspective, which was <laughs> always fucking hysterical. Like, hey, we hate cyclists, but why don't you write something? And then we'll just dissent against you. Oh, that's that's it. That's it. That was my favorite oh, thing I ever wrote. God, I don't remember cyclist. what it was, but I wrote a piece disagreeing with the main writer of the magazine who wrote the piece opposite me, and it was wonderful. It was great. I have... I do not remember what that was. God damn it. Oh, that makes me really happy. I'm going to find that. But yeah, no, I loved opinion pieces, and I will never advocate for anyone's opinion. I think I think there's too much opinion shaming. I do. I think even stupid opinions, the louder you get them out there, the louder everyone should shout at them. And not shout at them, but fucking educate these people. Yeah, I I, believe, I I agree with and the if people show are spouting back, lies sure. and repeating themselves, yes, don't give them a fucking platform. CNN, CBC, anyone, CBC actually don't think is that terribly disingenuous with giving platforms to people who are advocating awful, awful opinions. I know everyone else there is out there is going like, well, Rex, what's his name? And I'm like, well, yeah, the, there's actually a, a funny okay thing sometimes. because uh, tonight, and it's was it uh, June twelfth, thirteenth. 
Fourteenth. Fourteenth. Are you living in a time loop? Yes. Or just rural Nova Scotia? Rural Nova Scotia. Okay. Uh, it, so it's June fourteenth, uh, and uh, today <coughs> Don Martin was on CTV because, of course, CTV being CTV, they interview their own people to fill time. Uh, I don't mind that. I I do. Um, it. It, to go to someone within your organization for editorial or commentary is just it's a feedback loop it's it's a it's I a think used writing can loop. be fun I think if it's used to look critically at your own self and organization it can be very fun I think if it's just padlet it, it, is, time, then it yeah. is not to look at the, it, it, this is CTV see it should be fucking satire of itself that I would fucking watch well it was Don Martin um, oh, what's that show? Um, oh, shit, British show, something, 1A, W1A. Oh, I've never seen that for some Oh, God. Years. I know, I know. Watch I keep all of it. About it. So good. I think it's because it's the name and you always forget. The yeah, name. W1A. It's a hard name to remember. Yeah, I'm sorry. But it's, worth it, it. it's not as good as if Black CBC, Books or the IT crowd. If CBC remade W1A, I would die. I really would. I would. Oh my God, CBC, please hire me to write a W1A for CBC. Well, they did I would be make, the happiest man in the universe, and I would do wonderfully proud work for you. They did make the only newsroom I recognize. Oh, it's so good. Not the not the uh, the American one by um, what's his nut Mick up his ass. No, no, in the 90s, they made uh, this wonderful dark comedy called The Newsroom. And um, just. It was by the same people who did um, Made in Canada. Yeah, but it was. I've never seen The Newsroom. It's a harder version of it. Okay. Oh, it is the greatest thing because it's it's all 100%. Yep, no, yep, even even to this day. Yep. Oh, Made in Canada is the same. It's great. Yeah, Made in Canada is great. And. Main Canada is one of those one of two reasons why I I know we've gone way off topic, but I don't I don't fucking care. That's never happened before on this show. No, never on this show. I've never made that <laughs> comment before on this show as well. But uh, Main Canada this segment is so meta. <laughs> is one of the two reasons why Rick Mercer is like has has my respect. Uh, the first is the the first couple of years of uh, this hour's twenty two minutes is actually biting and scathing, but. Made in Canada, he's really good in it. Come out sooner. <laughs> yeah, well, no, obviously. Ugh! Obviously. I'm sorry. I know everyone has their reasons. I... Okay, let's go there for a minute. Yeah, why not? I came out at 17 in rural Nova Scotia. I, yes, admittedly, I had fairly, like, liberal parents, but they were, like, Presbyterian liberal. They could have gone either way. And, like, as for the extended family, God only knew. Um, as they told me all the time, God only knows. But, uh, come on, if you have a public role, like, that's what I loved about Scott Thompson. Like, if you have a public role, like, be yourself. It's gonna be so, I, I realize it's hard, but once you're there, just let it slip one day and then be that for extra fun there's on the, air. And then you're a light for some fucking kid. There's the question now uh, that I want to ask Scott Thompson, Scott, Scott Thompson, because you know that they had been in the room with each other a few times as both big cbc stars and like big canadian stars so like mm. they would have been at the same like you know comedy galas and and, and cbc events and mm. and shit like that they would have met a few times that interaction before rick mercer came out between mm-hmm. scott thompson and rick could could scott look at him and just be like you you Oh, no, 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 no. Did, did Rick no, no, run? No, 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 no. Did no. Rick run just... No, 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 no. Run no, from no, it all. No, no, run from it no. all. Hide it. Hide it. No. 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 Just full on like, hey there, open secret. <laughs> what are you talking about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. What do I... Can you not hear me inside the closet, Rick Mercer? Open the door so you can hear me, Rick Mercer. No wonder your rants sound so good. The acoustics are excellent inside your closet where you've been for so long, Rick Mercer. He's just running from the fucking room. I get that it's the ultimate in judginess from me, but fuck. It's so necessary when you have a public platform. Especially at that that like level of respectability. He's... Were you not an early teen who was super conflicted and could have used something? Anyone? I'm Come on. I'm trying to think of an, someone in American culture that is equal to him. And all I can find is 
What if Bill Cosby wasn't a rapist? I miss the universe where Bill Cosby wasn't a rapist. Everyone does. I know that's not original. Apparently it never existed. I know. <sighs> but, um, uh, uh, it, like, that level of, like, no, no, he's he's respectable. You can book him for anything. He'll show up. He'll do great work. Everyone loves him. Now, see, I got <sighs> mad at Rick Mercer for not coming out earlier, which yeah. is already going to get me some hey fag letters. But then you compare him to Bill Cosby, which is going to get no, my no, commentary no, no, completely no, no, no. ignored. I, this is I, dueling opinion I comments again. I compared him to Bill Cosby before you knew he was a rapist. So technically, that would be Dr. Cosby. The Dr. Cosby years. When it was like, Dr. Cosby no, see, said I, this. I, yeah. Therefore, it's true. Dr. Cosby. Rick Mercer never tried to sell me Jello. He, should, he also didn't he, try to rape anyone. He though, should, you know. Yeah, I, I hope not. But he should definitely try to sell Jello. I just think that more people uh, who are, are of celebrity status should should take those steps. The um the the Lay's Mac, uh, Mark Mercier steps of like or Mark Messier steps of of becoming associated with something completely fucking unrelated for a while. Just, Rick Mercer's rants. Yeah, his early rants. The early rants were so brilliant and those were opinion columns. Wonderful. Those they, were opinion columns read to you while walking along an alleyway. Yeah, like kind of yelling at you in a loud and voice, and they were fantastic. His show, I could, I just couldn't. I I wanted to. It it was literally on I the did road watch again. It and I couldn't. I could, it, also couldn't with on the road again. There, like I know it's a cultural touchstone, it's, and it's I couldn't. I, yeah, too, it's too camp without being camp it's entirely yeah. straight it's yeah. entirely straight yeah it's 80s pro wrestling yeah it's like if it was at all on the nose it would be hilarious but it's it's like it's either two or not at all i don't get yeah. it but it's one of those and it's terrible it's like, entirely honest no. and it's and earnest and that doesn't work it's like no possibly hostile if you were sending <laughs> if you were sending up yourself it would work but yeah yeah there's a bit of like there's a bit of aggression to you, like even when you're being jolly and jovial, and they're like, "Ah, your energy is kind of, kind of manic for you to not acknowledge that." Like, yeah, just a little. I'm a genial show host. Pay attention. Like, <laughs> ah, ah, ah. <laughs> we're gonna skate on the Renault Canal, and my grin is gonna be huge. Like, ah, 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 I like you more when you're yelling at me. Woo! They say it's not frozen yet, so I'm taking these thirteen children with me. <laughs> 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 Are there any other like Canadian pop cultural icons we want to insult in this segment? The fuck the friendly giant. Why are we gonna? Oh no, we were gonna we were gonna fuck the um. Never! How dare you! That took me a moment. No, I actually had to think Are about you if say I wanted fuck to Rusty say the that. Rooster and like who else? Who was the other one? Rusty the Rooster. Rusty the Rooster has a hand up his ass already. Look way up, and I'll call Rusty. <laughs> Rusty the Rooster and who was the fucking other one? The the, the sock puppet. Was it no? There was like a there was a, there was a giraffe or something. Yeah, that was a, well. Yeah, okay, like. Sock puppet giraffe. Yeah, but there was Rusty the Rooster was in a fucking bag. bag. Like, and the other one was like, hi, I'm coming in through the window. God, he's in a bag. Yeah, it's, okay. It's uh, so stupid. Write us a hate bag so and hate charity and be like, who is this? No, no, well, yes, but not Mr. Dressup. That's the only exemption. I should actually get those and emails. Hey, hey, faggot and hey, tranny at gmail.com see if that's <gasps> see did if that's I say that? Available. don't write those people but no, we should, should see if they're available I should see if that's available see if like anyone's been offended enough to take it or anything it's probably gonna be like hey faggot 4321 censored like oh gmail's probably gonna be like you can't have that gmail I wonder if I can get 69 yeah Hey faggot at blasphemy.net is probably available. That's about it. <laughs> I'll contact the Church of Satan and ask them if I can get a very special email through their server. That's great. They're so cool that they might actually let me do it. Reverend Michaela Quinn, medicine woman at demonology.org. Ooh, uh, that looked good on business. Fake car. websites are the funniest things to come up with ever. I know, right? Oh, my favorite website that is completely real, but I don't think has been updated since 1998. Uh, the Church of Ed Wood. It, I need to look that it's up. It's a literal church. 
based on the teachings of Ed, Ed Wood. Wood. <laughs> I've Go added, on. <laughs> I, I, they claim on the website that they will ordain you. I have asked, but as there has not been much activity on the website since the late 90s, I have not received a response because I very much would like to be ordained as a priest or priestess or whatever the fuck it is you are in the church of Ed fucking Wood. Archmage, clearly. Clearly! Like... I'm so uneducated. I want it, I want it, I want it. And that they don't approach it, but s- like clearly still pay for the bandwidth and the website. Can you have yourself ordained as like Archmage Mickey Quinn, MD? I, I think by the nature of the internet, I can say it and it is. That's great. It, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to do that thing I occasionally do and return us to format for a second. Okay. I hate when I do that. But it was because of making up fake websites got me there. You, <laughs> making up fake advertisements. Ooh, fun. Fuck sakes, you made some hysterical <sighs> shit. I never, ever, ever just like fucking died corpse to laugh <laughs> my ass off in the newsroom. <sighs> is when you showed me a fake ad. I. They were great. They were truly the greatest expressions I could ever have. Where anything I wanted to comment on... All I had to do was make it a funny little fucking fake ad. They were why I started following the magazine. And that was what got me to work there. So thanks for that. Oh, you're welcome. They were amazing. Just so fun. Always skewered every stupid, like, everyone's always angry at the local power company. So I'm like, okay, let's make a ridiculous parody of itself. Like, it just, oh, it worked every time. And it was I, so good. I, I can even remember, like, uh, one well, of my favorite power company was uh, ones was they they made some ethereal bullshit like um, oh what is light it is energy it is what powers your home it is what, <laughs> you know and they had like a little tiny think chat. about your place in the cosmos you are energy you that's are why we're energy. charging you an exorbitant you amount a month for yourself it. and they had like a little child it's your fee arm. for being. <laughs> And the orb was like energy and shit. So I just replaced it with like, you know, some woman holding an orb. And, and I had the whole fucking uh, uh, dialogue of Yoda down to the <laughs> side. And it fit perfectly. It was beautiful. Oh my god. It binds us. It's so strong. Material beings we are not. Oh man. Uh, 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 the satire, writing satire was... That was the best Always part. the most fun. Always the most fun. Unfortunately, I feel like they've stepped away from that. I, You know, that was... It was always the hard part. Is like, I always just wanted to write satire. Mm-hmm. And there was, a, there was a forum for satire there. You did get to write satire, and it was wonderful. And you got to write, like, writing fucking comic doodles and, like, hysterical fake quotes and shit. And, like, not fake quotes and, like, articles, you know. No, but, no, like, no, 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 no. But, like, nonsense piled on top of nonsense like, uh, the, i'm thinking of like the the clearly very obviously fake like balloon yeah. speech bubbles uh, on some photos see uh, when i when i think when i think <laughs> of fake so quotes fun. every single time i flash back to this article i wrote um back at acadia i was i was in charge of something called the distractions page and they wanted just like a bunch of puzzles and i was like fuck you you're getting my insane stories Mm -hmm. and so i'd write these fake stories about nonsense that that clearly didn't happen like um one of my favorite ones is uh, and the one that brings it all back to this is uh they blew up the tower building they decided to blow up this tower. It's the build- biggest fucking building on campus, so you can tell that they didn't blow it up. It's all the buzzwords. Our audience is just beyond massive now. Oh, I know. So, you know, it's like they blew up the tower building, and, uh, you know, like they held a big celebration when they were doing it. There's a, 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 a kager, like here's coverage of the kager uh, during the explosion. Here's, here's what set it off, and here's the president of the school who is drunk and high as fuck sitting on a throne made of the... Uh, uh, the remnants of the tower that have been built into a weed <laughs> plant, and she's just like, "Yeah, fuck that tower." And I got a complaint saying that that I shouldn't say that because it uh, it, it it paints the university in a bad light. It's like it's clearly fake. 
It's so insane that you... It, it's it's a, a world-renowned Israeli geneticist sitting on a throne of concrete in the shape of a weed plant <laughs> in a toga <laughs> celebrating a kegger of exploding a building in Wolfville. It's bullshit! There are two kinds of people. There are two kinds of people who annoy me. People who are like, the British have the greatest sense of humor in the world. Yeah. And I will brook no argument against that. And I'm like, mm. Wobble. And then, secondly, are people who are like, you can't make that kind of joke. You can't, <laughs> like, you have to have some line. You can't add, you can't lampoon everything. There must be some sacred cows. There must be some. And you know what my overlap between those two people is? Yeah. Fucking everything. It's always the same <laughs> goddamn person. Like, British comedy is the funniest comedy in the world. <laughs> but you can't make fun of that. And I'm like, mm, mm, that's what's funny about British comedy. They make fun of everything, including Clearly themselves constantly. The they yeah. rip on everything. There is no sacred cow. Oh my god, like, I hate you. I feel like that oh. is that has to be the base oh. underlying theme oh. of Monty Python at least, is like, no, everything. Just just those two words. No, period, everything. Yeah. I did love getting the occasional I never loved I never loved getting hate on stories. Like things I researched and like got like lots of first person quotes and arguments for and shit and like facts. Yeah. People who wrote me like nasty shit about those that irked me. But when people wrote me shit about my opinion columns, basically just like, You're an asshole for the following reasons, I loved Every second of it. It was great. It was so good. I, I, I'm sure I've talked about it on this show before, but the time I got an editorial sent back to me with a guy that had drawn a cock and then yes. an arrow towards it, and it said Blake's mouth here, I fucking died. I wanted to frame it. I was so proud. I thought you took that home. I have it somewhere, but I haven't framed it yet. Oh I, it God. was wonderful. That was great. Uh, I only got two complaints about my editorials, and it's from the what? same person. You worked there so much longer than me. Was I that offensive? <laughs> and I think I, I I want to say I was that clever, but that's oh, probably boo. bullshit. Oh, boo. Thanks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, but they were from the same person, and both times... Like, you're dull and you're wrong. <laughs> Here's your mouth on a cock. <laughs> Go on, <laughs> bitch. <sighs> Uh, anyway, uh, so they, uh, both times I had criticized guns mm -hmm. and this one guy who, uh, loved to read the magazine, uh, he, he loves him, his guns and There's a he shock. will write three pages to you explaining why you're wrong and why guns are awesome. See, but that gets me back to like, it's fascinating. You should engage with some people. Okay. Uh, the amount I will of never say you shouldn't incredible. engage with the mentally ill, but sometimes there were people who just called every day and just like there was just on the unloading, and it's like I'm not like your counselor. I don't need to hear this nonsense. Like you're not engaging with anything I'm writing. You're just calling me a crank. Like yeah. You know. Uh, but when it comes to engaging with people you sincerely disagree with, like gun people, like no, write that five page letter to me. Go ahead. Here's a little story about me and guns. I got bequeathed a gun from oh, yeah. a relative. Uh, and, you know, I think it was my, you know, I think it was my great-grandfather. Anyway, deceased somebody gave me a rifle, and I got ammo for it and everything. And I was like, well, that's interesting. That's in my closet. I'm a teenager. Okay, whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, as one, thank God I don't own a trench coat. Like, <laughs> oh, I did, but it was beige, and that was fine. I was just trying oh, yeah. to be fashionable because, you know, it's so gay, so 17. Um, anyway, and it's so gay, so 17 in my trench coat with my blue sunglasses. I, like, tinted lenses. Terrible. See the world through ice. Like, what are you, Mr. Freeze? <sighs> I have purple ones. Oh, thank God. You just made me feel so much better. <laughs> Neither of us had rose-tinted glasses. That's clearly true from our cynicism and occasional comedy. Um. I had, I had But tea. I gave this away. I had tea glasses. But I gave this away. I, uh, not like on the street, not like, here's a gun, but like... <laughs> He's a gun. Uh, hey, but like you another want a gun? 
<laughs> this is what's lovely. I'm like, it's Canada, and it was a long gun back in the day. Like, it wasn't in anyone's name. Like, I'm not kind of old. Uh, but yeah, so I gave it to another family relative. Who, uh, I think it was a blind cousin. <laughs> Here, I think have it a gun. Been. I'm not sure. It was either him or his sibling, but it may have been a blind, a blind cousin. I'm not sure. I hope that was the case more than anything. But anyway, I gave it away because I was all like, I'm a pacifist. I don't agree with guns. Blah, blah, blah. And now I'm just like, now I'm old and I don't think my family history is actually kind of neat. And I wish I had that fucking gun and I don't necessarily need the ammo because I'm never going to use it. But I might want to shoot targets or bottles or like maybe a deer someday. Like, but I don't own a gun. I mean, I do, thieves. I, I mean, I don't, law. Instead, you're like some weird fucking comedy sketch where you offloaded a gun you didn't want. <laughs> blind man. I think I just confessed to a crime on a podcast. It's okay. It was the whatever decade that was legal in. <laughs> yeah, I gave it to a blind guy. I was what? just holding it for a guy. family member. <laughs> Ooh, the guy over there. The guy who's pointing it at a person. He doesn't know. He's blind. Don't worry. So this has been our show. I have to go. I've been... Uh, never mind. <laughs> Who are you? Ah, oh, I am Michaela Garman. You're an accomplice. I might Oh, no, be... I, I didn't know about this beforehand. I I, I was Blake Hunsley. <laughs> On the run. On the road Hunted. again. <laughs> Sought after. No refuge. I'm the littlest homo. Aw. Oh. Play the theme tune. <laughs>